Hi, I'm Ryan Malior, and welcome to Marlboro Minute. Every day as we go through life, there is a musical soundtrack. Take a moment and listen for it. Sometimes it's intentional as you play music in your car or sing around the house. Or sometimes when you're shopping at the mall, you don't get so much choice as they pump holiday tunes through the speakers. But for many musicians and singers, music is much more than a passive listening experience. They spend their whole lives training, taking lessons, and practicing to improve upon their craft. Well, during the COVID pandemic, many choirs had to cease performing as singing was labeled one of the most dangerous activities of all. Well, Marlboro residents, Catherine and Bryce Denny, decided to get creative using technology to bring singers together in a safe way. And they decided to make a documentary about their adventure along the way. I'd like to welcome Catherine and Bryce to WMCT TV to talk about their film, The Drive to Sing. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having us. So Catherine, I know that you are a multifaceted musician. You're a singer, a composer, a conductor, and, and Bryce, you're a pianist. You accompany musical groups as well, and you've collaborated together. So prior to the pandemic, I'm very curious, how did music shape your life? <laughs> well, I taught for a number of years, and then I stopped teaching so that I could become a, a kind of freelance professional musician. Um, mostly doing theater groups and and um, choral singing and choral directing. So it was very um, different when we were told that we could not sing mm -hmm. because it our like my calendar became a war zone. Like, okay, this show is canceled and this concert is canceled and all the rehearsals are canceled and this is canceled. And we were like, what are we going to do? So. Yeah, because it's part of your profession and it's so deeply ingrained in you. Was that the same for you, Bryce? So, yeah, I've, so I, I often, I accompany choruses and I play in a chamber music group and um, so mo mostly on the piano. So it was, it was a big part of my life also. Um, so I'm, I'm an electrical engineer by, you know, by day and then, and then I do a lot of music at night. Um, so yeah, it, it, it was a, it was a big change, a, a big loss, and, and we were all trying to figure out, well, what can we do? I'm sure there's some way we can figure this out. You know, everybody was going to internet solutions like virtual choirs where everyone records themselves separately in their own houses and things like that. So we, we started learning about that. Um, and but. Zoom was great for things like school and meetings and birthday parties and stuff, but when choruses tried to sing together on Zoom, we realized that we could not stay together. Because oh, I've experienced it. it. It's, it's, a, it's a nightmarish sort of thing because there's delay from every single angle you could imagine. Plus you're dealing with the microphone on, on a computer, which a newer MacBook might have a pretty good microphone, but no microphone on a, on a computer is meant to have someone singing full out into it, yeah. especially yes. into Zoom. Um, and we learned new vocabulary like latency, which it turns out that if you're talking to someone on the phone, you can't sing simultaneously to them either, but you usually don't try. Right. So, so Zoom was sort of a failure and virtual choirs were okay, but they were not collaborative. You're just kind of sitting in your room and going, oh man, I look terrible. No, it's about your sound. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. You, you figured out a solution for people to sing together in person. How did this brainstorming happen? Was it a, a bolt of lightning in the middle of the night and you shot up out of bed and had an idea or what, how did it all happen? Uh, not a bolt of lightning. No. It, it, was a, it was definitely a process. <laughs> well, because, so we saw people doing virtual choirs. So we said, okay, we'll do one. And we learned how to, you know, edit people's cell phone videos together and make a, make a, you know, the thing with the little squares, everyone singing at once. And actually, that, for me, editing the video was actually kind of fun because I got to hear everybody. But for the individuals, they only heard themselves, you know, hiding away in the closet or something, trying to stay isolated <laughs> so that they could make a good recording. Um, so, you know, it, 
you could make a video, but it was not exactly a fun process. No, it was not um, fun. It's very, you feel very, ex I've done a few myself, and I've helped yeah. edit uh, some different high schools that did some different choral things. Yep. And, and you can just tell they feel, you feel exposed because you're recording all by yourself, and which is very different for someone who's pursuing choral singing versus solo singing. Choral singing is all about blend and, and feeling like one cohesive unit cutting off together and riding dynamics together. So tell me more about how you adapted and well, okay, so I, I knew it was possible to have like, you know, you could have a, a conference where, where you know, in, people are in different rooms and they can talk to each other. I knew with some kind of microphones or speakers or something, it must be possible to have real, you know, live um, with no internet delays. No latency. And no latency, um, somehow, but I didn't know how. I, I had this a little tiny mixer that we'd used for recordings before, and but I figured, well, I'll, I'll just start Googling. And, and so I, I uh, you know, tried, you know, speakers and mics and, and just l learn how to do do experiments from, you know, with different rooms in our, in our house. Yeah, we and happen to have These people hear those people, you know. <laughs> so we each went into a different room and had our own microphone that was attached to the mixer in the hallway. And we were like, okay, can you hear me through the wall? No, okay. So then we had our headphones and we would sing. And we, we did this one song where we were all singing together and we stopped, there was a fermata, and then we all breathed. And came in exactly, and we we're like, "Wow, that was really cool." We're getting there. <laughs> we we're could probably something. like do that outside, and you know. Right, because we, you know, you know, within our house, we have some singers, and, and that's great. Um, but we, but there's so many other people that we always make music with, and we wanted to to be able to include them too somehow. And I feel like social media was a really important part of this story because we were so connected to each other online and lots of people were talking about how much they missed singing and that um, there was a webinar in May where they said, oh, singing is the most dangerous thing you could do. And people were devastated. Yeah, one so. to two years. Maybe you can try it in one to two years. After they develop vaccines, after enough people have it, they, they kind of called it. They, they predicted that's how long it would take right. for people to be in person again. So you, you finally developed this, this system and was it difficult to convince people to join you and, <laughs> and hop in their car and come to Not really. Your, no, it wasn't. People Not were excited to give it a try yeah. <laughs> because by that time it had been a few months of, of everything being locked down. Um, but here was something that, you know, it's, it's pretty much risk-free to drive to someone's house, stay in your car, and sing from your car. Like, that's about as safe as it could be. Hold on the window a little for, for Catherine that's, to, to get a, a sanitized microphone. That's right. Through the, that's through right. The track, right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And so our driveway in Marlboro just became the place where people, you know, what we would fit as many cars as we could in our driveway. It's not that long. Like and then we would put five. people on the, <laughs> on the road and then across the street and on the, on the perpendicular road. And I would stand, like, in the middle of the driveway and be like, okay, can everybody see me? Cool. She, <laughs> yeah. yeah, she got to conduct a choir again. That's really Just, neat. You did. So there's a lot of technology involved here, and you get a really good in-depth look at it in, in the documentary. And of course, it's all available online too. You've made it a, a resource with an elaborate PDF, and it's it's chaptered and everything. Uh, what led you to do all of that extra work? So. We we hoped that we could find something that was cheap enough and simple enough that everybody could do it. Mm. We, we were hearing about schools were canceling their chorus, you know, everybody was canceling chorus. And, and we thought, well, there's got to be some way, there's got to be a way. And so we were just trying different things, you know, we bought, you know, super cheap microphones and medium microphones and like borrowed some better microphones, like what's good enough and what's, what's simple enough that, right. that other people could try it too. So early on, we we were just trying to find find something that works and, and also collaborating a lot with other people and then helping them do it too if it worked well enough. And I remember the first time we kind of made a selfie video talking about what we had done in our driveway and it was like, the, I looked so ridiculous. I'm like reading <laughs> something really. And suddenly it had like a thousand hits on it. We we're like, oh no, we better <laughs> step up our production values. People were so around the, around the world. We're like, how can we do this? We want to know. And so then he started really like documenting all of the mistakes and successes and, and what, you know, 
the, the cheapest stuff and how, like, we, I remember one photo shoot where we would, like, take a picture of every different item that was in the spreadsheet and, like, how it worked when you're holding your music and you have your steering wheel here and you're, like, have your headphones or you have your radio or you have your, you know, it's like... <laughs> And then this connects to this, and this connects to that for, you know? <laughs> so right. complicated. Right, so, so you could have a handheld microphone, but then if you're actually going to sing with a choir, you need to hold your music too, and so that's kind of a pain. Um, but then if you attach it to your body or something, then those microphones aren't as good, or, or they're not as directional, so it didn't work as well as the handheld. Oh, so we, yeah, we were trying different kinds. Put on a lava, oh, right. Alex is going to yell at me for touching my microphone. <laughs> if you put on a lavalier like that, then suddenly, oh, if you have a radio signal playing, then it might interfere. Right. The first time we posted a video on Facebook with four people in, in our driveway, um, so within about 45 minutes, somebody said, oh, you should talk to David Newman. He's done this too. And we were like, who's David Newman? Okay, cool. Well, he had that had done um, bigger groups in a similar way, but with radio waves, and so and he taught us. And he wasn't based out of Massachusetts. No, Virginia. No, he was in Virginia. Virginia. So now you've connected with a kindred spirit online, and yes. what, did, what were you able to learn from each other? Well, so he, he taught us about how to use wireless mics and which ones worked well enough for him. Mm -hmm. And so that, that saved us all kinds of, and we're of, affordable. of time and, and encouraged us to go give that a try. Um, and then he used radio transmission to get the sound to the people as well. Um, and that, that was a big help because we had used two wires to every single car, and, and that just was not like gonna go very far. Ah, yeah, yeah, like sports broadcasting with the headphones. With the, yeah. yeah, headphones with a little microphone. Wow, yeah. yeah. And, and, that that, probably, and that probably still works for some scenarios, but when you're growing at such a large, large rate, so basically, David helped us scale it sure. to probably 20, you know, in our, our neighborhood, I think we, we could fit maybe 18 cars that would sit. And then it, once we got bigger than that, we were like, we better find someplace else to We need a real parking lot. <laughs> so where was that real parking lot? Where did you find well, a home? Well, one of the singers who came to our neighborhood um, teaches at a, uh, or is the music director at St. Anne's Church in Lincoln. And he said, can you come to our church? And... That was a kind of daunting question for us at first, but we bought a bunch of bins and we made everything kind of fit into our SUV exactly. Like that that car was <laughs> jam-packed. It only worked one way. We had to fit the music stand and the piano and the, you know, all the microphones and all the, you know. Well, and, and there was always this, <laughs> this fear that... It, you're going to go somewhere and then leave leave behind some stuff. Um, if it's at your house, you can just run in and get it. Right. <laughs> um, but we had a three-page checklist. So we had checklist. this yeah giant checklist, and and every once in a while we did forget something, and we had to sort of scrounge around or use a backup plan. Right. Um, it, w once once we forgot a the power cord to the mixer. <laughs> One of the most important things to power the whole event. But it happened yeah. to be the day that the Today Show was covering an event and the guy had one. <laughs> <laughs> That was, it was, that was awesome. crazy. <laughs> now you brought some very, a very interesting contraption over here, and, <laughs> and you told me earlier that this is something that one of our Marlboro neighbors built for you. Exactly. They, they were they saw all these cars pulling up and heard beautiful music outside of their house, and and got involved in, in their own way. Tell me about that. Okay. Yeah. So our, our neighbor Jen Helbers uh, lives across the street, and he saw he obviously saw this car gathering, singing thing going on once in a while. And this asked us about. And sitting in the driveway, and it, waving it, your hand. <laughs> and it turns out he knows he knows all about radio things and how to how to build radio stuff, and so he helped us figure out which frequencies to use to avoid other radio stations, and then later, as we talked about microphone problems, he. He said, oh, here's what you need, and he, he built this thing. Um, so, so what this is, is it has these two, these two antennas uh, listen to the wireless mics that the singers are holding. So they, they get each, each person's voice um, coming in through, through these radio frequencies, and then we mix it together in the mixer and, and balance the voice parts. And then, then this, this antenna in the center broadcasts the radio signal back to everyone that has the choir sound, the whole choir now, and then people in their cars could turn turn the radio So to that's whatever. the feed out of the mixer going yes. to the radio. I got exactly. you. Exactly. Um, but the reason that it's, the reason we needed to, to solve, the, the problem that we had was that we all our audio equipment was inside the car. 
and antennas inside a car are not going to work very well they, because the car is made of metal. Um, but, but this guy, it has little rubber feet, so we could put it right on the top of without the car. Without scratching up the, the Without room. scratching it, yep. Nice. And, and you know, the higher the antenna is, the better, it can, you know, the better it can reach other people. And so we had better range, and, and it sounded better once we switched to this thing. Well, you lucked out with a good neighbor. That's pretty <laughs> <No kidding>. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and we yeah, can even... Uh, it's pretty there amazing. Was one day when it was pouring down rain for the entire day, and that was just on top of the car, and we had it had to run through the window. So you had to, like, crack the window and put a towel over it so that it didn't rain into the car. But then everything else was inside, and you could run the thing from... <laughs> you know, from the safety of our car. Now, we've talked quite a bit about your journey and, and actually creating this technology and, and helping facilitate it for other coral groups. When did your mind switch and say, I've got to document this. Let's, <laughs> let's make it a documentary. <laughs> so that came pretty late in the game. So early on, we were documenting, you can do this too. Mm -hmm. um, and so we videoed everything because we wanted to, to show people it wasn't actually that difficult and other people are, are doing it and it works for them and they should, they should give it a try. Um, so it was kind of a sales pitch early right. on. You know, right. you can do it. And, and that's where the documents kind of came from too. You know, the website with, with like this, if you buy exactly these things and you plug them exactly this way, you'll have a choir. Right. Um, but then it, it was really kind of later in the game when we'd done a lot of you know, small events and large events, and we saw how much it meant to everybody. And we saw that people around the country were finding the stuff online and just building it and saying, hey, guess what? We just had our first event, which is like skipping 10 steps that we went through just because he had made such detailed notes. You know, it's only, well, we well that was kind of We were super happy for people to copy it. Yeah. We know 60 groups that that did something like this Some with microphones Canada, and mixers and stuff. Um, Seattle, 20, Arizona. 20 states, I think. Yeah, yeah. all over and let's, let's take a look at the trailer for The Drive to Sing. Five people who showed up have now tested positive or are showing symptoms of coronavirus and two members have died. The isolation that went on endlessly was terrible. I knew that I had wireless microphones and other technology that would make that possible. I got three friends, an alto, a tenor, and bass. I'm a soprano. And we sang together in our driveway. And goosebumps, tears, just absolute elation about the fact that after four months, part of our soul was coming back. Finally, here are some kindred spirits who want to make this happen. As you can tell, we got a little bit fanatical about this. When we started recruiting singers, it was hard to explain what we were going to do. Um, and people kept saying, in a car? And I was like, yes, in a car. For the first time in so many months, I was singing with people in real time, beautiful, meaningful music. It blew my mind. So of course in this documentary we get a really nice snapshot of the technology and how you came up with it and, and shared it, but what was really moving to me was hearing the personal testimonials of people who are finally able to sing again. Can you tell me what it was like gathering those interviews and, and hearing some of those special stories? Yeah, it, it was really meaningful for people. I think that especially the there were a lot of groups that were able to have an entire season with their choruses by um, building this technology and just having weekly rehearsals in parking lots. And for so many people, because the COVID, you know, 2020 and 2021 were such an isolated time, it was really something that kept people going. 
that was the one and only reason that they left their house. And I think that was an incredible advantage to a lot of people's mental health. You know? Well, I think even prior to COVID, there are certain people that maybe choir was the only reason they, they got up and left their house to go to that church right. choir practice beforehand. So to have that taken away from them was terrible, really right. awful. Yeah, people realized that chorus is not just about music, but it's also about a social connection to a lot of people. Right, so. right. So how did you approach this whole documentary? Did you suddenly have to invest in, in video equipment and, and other microphones? Or did you rent a production company? Or how did it all come <laughs> together? No, well, the whole project was about learning and do it, doing it yourself. And so we, this, that, that kind of continued. Your, that was your year of, of doing it yourself, <laughs> wasn't it? Right? <laughs> Including the documentary. <laughs> yeah, but, well, mostly. So we, we did we did buy a better really camera uh, once we decided, you know, I, I think this we're going to really start filming for real and, and learning how to do interviews. So we got some microphones for that. Um, but mostly it was just deciding to, to focus more on, on on covering what you know, interviewing people and, and hearing what they what what they felt about it all. Um, when earlier it was more about showing them how. Mm. And so I think that the reason that we made the documentary is that we could see the spread around the country, and it was a, a it was one of the few positive stories in the pandemic. So lots of news. Um, stories popped up like, oh, look what this group is doing in Michigan. Look what happened in Florida. Look what, you know. And that was cool, but these three little, three minute little videos didn't get to the heart of it. And so we really wanted to kind of show this community that we, that had developed around the country because like in that most isolating time in our, in my lifetime, we met hundreds of people. Right. You know? So there was some good that came out of the pandemic. Would, would, <laughs> would, I mean, you probably wouldn't have met any, had made many of these connections. Yeah. Absolutely true. And do you still keep in touch with many of these choirs now? Yeah. And that's awesome. Yeah, in fact, a lot of them, like we're going to um, Virginia to do something at David Newman's college where he teaches. Wow. And his students are going to come to it. And it's, it's Yeah, it's strange. It's, it's been, been a, a connecting experience for us, even though overall, you know, within the rest of the world, it was a, a separating, isolating experience. So it, it's, it's very strange. It's a little backwards, it's, yeah. Yeah, there, there are a lot of contradictions there. <laughs> What's you know? the pro you know, I've, I, I work in television, but something about the word documentary scares me away. <laughs> because even working on a small project, I end up with hours of footage. And you must have, do you have any idea how many hours of footage you had when you you'd finished collecting all of these pieces? And then how do you begin to organize it and cut? And, and this is just for me, everyone at home, you, you can tune out if you want. This is, this is Bryce giving advice to me. <laughs> I think we had 160 hours. Wow. Um, because we, there was obviously there was stuff that, that we had done, and then we we said, hey everybody on, on social media, you know, send send us your pictures of car choirs and and things that you that you did. And, and again, it was something it. that everybody liked to take pictures of because it was so unusual. Like, yeah. what are these people sitting behind their steering wheels with a microphone? Yeah. Like, ah, you know, yeah. it's weird. Yeah, yeah. And that, that was part of the appeal. It's it's kind of weird looking, and it's a little surprising, and and also just at that time singing together was pretty much impossible. Right. But then there was a way if you just try hard enough and and you know, if and do some research and collect some some equipment. Uh, there were a lot of a lot of choirs did sort of like a donate your old microphones drive or something like that. Because, you know, it, it's somewhat expensive to, to get a bunch of wireless mics. Um, but there were, there were ways, different ways to do it. And sometimes a lot of old equipment could do it just as well. Yeah, the people in New Jersey, Somerset Hills, um, had their members buy a microphone and 25 feet of cable. Mm -hmm. So you drive in, you hand your cable to the technology person, you find your parking space, and there you're you set. Wow. <laughs> and so we didn't. We used the same 24 mics, 32 mics, I guess, was our was our maximum. And we would wash them in between, and you know. Did, like every time somebody wanted an event, I would be like, okay, one B is gonna be Sarah, and two C is gonna be, you know. 
figured out. <laughs> Having helped all these different choirs and, and created so many opportunities for, for your groups of singers, is there something, was there a culminating moment when you're like, wow, this is epic, this is more than I ever dreamed it could have been when we were first started off singing right here in my driveway in Marlboro? <laughs> I think for, for me, the most emotional one was the Brahms Requiem, which was the first large, the first really large group that we had done. And, and uh, part, it was partly the, the, the piece is such a beautiful piece. And the choir, we, 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 did, we met through this project. We, we didn't know them before, um, but they sounded amazing, even having not rehearsed for, they, they haven't been together for months and months. And so just, it's, it was so unlikely and yet it was so well done and so beautiful that the, um, the music just turned out, it, it was just kind of incredible. Wow. And that, that was also the day that the Today Show happened to have to want to come and film one of our events. That was kind of crazy too. Um, and, then, and then I got to, got to go home and take all the recordings and listen to them and mix them. Um, and it, it was just kind of surreal. How, how could this possibly have happened? Wow. It was, it was just so unlikely to ever happen, and then it did. Was the Brahms Requiem your favorite piece as well? <clears throat> That was a really memorable event. The other really interesting one was when we just decided we were going to do a Messiah sing. Oh. And typically around here, go, the, go big or go you home. might have like 20 different Messiah sings in the month of December to choose from and whatever. And um, we were kind of the only uh, gig in town, if you will. And so we went to a big, we, we learned after a while that the closer you are toward the city, the more interference you're going to get with the radio waves and the um, frequencies and stuff. So we liked to come out to the, you know, the we, rural, so th there was a area. huge parking lot in Bolton, which is a very small town with not a lot of, you know, population. And so um, we just invited people and we had like 160 people there. Now we only had 32 of them on mic and we had, and um, so the other thing is a lot of people were very generous, like, oh, do you want to, we're not using our marching band podium. Would that help for your big events? Yeah. So we borrowed from like Burlington High School. And so we have a guy on the top of this marching band podium, like conducting really big. We have the, the pianist inside a U-Haul wow. with a space heater on him so that his fingers could play handle on a 25 degree day, right? And just so many people came into that parking lot to listen to the music, have their score, and hallelujah. <laughs> it was just awesome. From the car. <laughs> I have to ask, now that things are are changing and restrictions are being lifted and and thankfully we can go back to singing the way we used to what will you take away from this and what do you think any of these groups will 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 take away from maybe from the, either the experience itself or from this new technology hmm. so we've heard of uh, a number of groups are, are doing live streams who never ever did live streams before. They're continuing to do that now that they know how. Um, some groups, if they bought microphones or if they bought video cameras, um, they, they now have that ability and, and the knowledge of how to use that stuff. Um, so so there's a, there was a lot of technical learning and, and buying of stuff in some cases that they didn't have before. Um, a, lot of, a lot of groups are doing uh, you know, we all learned to use Zoom, whether we wanted to or not, and <laughs> it's useful for a lot of things. Um, there, there are a lot of uh, kind of organizational things, and and sometimes even rehearsals that that can be done just as well. Um, online if you need to. I'm still going to board meetings via Zoom. Sure. You know, your commute time is literally like, doop, hi, <laughs> and now I'm done, so I'm with my family, you know? And I'm thinking even like so many a cappella groups have always used handheld microphones. Yes. Now maybe a church has a, a, a whole array of 30 microphones. You can right. really, you can really amp, amp them up and-, right. and Right, and, and, and they can record up. themselves way better than they could before. Wow, yeah. Right. But I also think that people in general have noticed the value of music in a more specific way. Like we've always loved music, we've always been grateful to be part of it, but now it's sort of like you can't take it for granted because we know what life was like when we couldn't do that. Mm. And the lengths that people were willing to go to to make sure that they still could. Right. So, the so if people are, are going to watch this documentary, and I hope they will, what, is, what are you hoping them to take away with them after a viewing? I think 
partly just the importance of music, mm. how, how, how important it was to the people in the show and, and the people who, who are enjoying it, watching it. Um, we're, we're more aware of it than we were. Right. Uh, of, and, and making music together, not just listening to it, but participating in it was so important to these people that they were willing to sit out there on a 30 degree day, um, in, you know, considerable inconvenience. <laughs> oh, I gotta ask you about one other thing though. There's this one part of the video where there's buses, buses, bus loads of people. You, you gotta, you gotta <laughs> loop me in with what was happening okay. there. So, so during the whole project, we only filmed the things that went really well because we wanted to say, here's how you can do it too. Right. Well, if we knew that we were from the get-go that we were going to make a documentary, we would have wanted to tell some of the tribulations. You need the disasters the too. And there was this one event where um, we we were in a school parking lot where they have the buses parked for the whole school district, and the marching band podium was right in front of this line of buses. It was and, like a Saturday afternoon. Yeah, something. and we had a, we always set up the cars in sort of a rainbow as if they're on risers, and we had probably third. 30, 40 cars there, and um, some of them had wireless microphones, but some of them had wires that went all the way across the parking lot to a big snake that we plugged them into, and um, <laughs> in the middle of our afternoon, this woman came up to us, and she was like, so um, I need to move that bus, and it was like, Okay, we're gonna take a break. Uh, could it was everyone like right list? behind the conductor. Yeah, it was like the, the most the inconvenient most place inconvenient. it could possibly so, be. So yes, like, of okay, course. could we have these eight cars just back up this much? And it, <laughs> of course, one of them needed a jump start because they've been running their radio, the radio. on yep. not the gas, but the electric, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh man, it was really funny. And nobody, neither of us was like, oh, let's go, let's go. Get out our video camera. No. <laughs> this would be a great story. I know. Nope. Next time, I'm not going to help. I'm going to get the video <laughs> camera out That's instead. That's it. <laughs> yeah, we were always in problem solving mode. So, like, oh, we want our clients to be well cared for. That <laughs> was fun. For anyone who's tuning in right now, how can they watch the, this awesome documentary? So, we're, we're going to have several. Um, several in-person screenings in the next few months. So you, you can go to the drive to sing.com to find out about whatever is the current news. Yeah. Um, we're planning one in Sudbury in December, one in Boxborough in um, Boxford. January. Sorry. Yep, in Boxford, in Boxford in January and, and a few, you know, during the next year or so. Um, one in Virginia. So oh, it's been nice. it's been going through some film festivals, and um, we don't. But the, you never know what's going to happen. The, you know, we might hear any minute that there's another film festival in a month, or we might not. You never know. So we're organizing some ourselves, and then um, so our, we we got music licenses so that we can put it onto streaming services, and we're we're still working out exactly which ones and where and that kind of thing. Another challenge, keep on learning. Yes, indeed. <laughs> oh my gosh. So much to learn. Music so licenses. Much, so much music. <laughs> oh yeah. What yes. did we end up with 67 songs? Wow. Yeah, yes. that's crazy. There's and a, a lot of If you were ever to do this again, you'd be we're only public domain. I music. would write the music. <laughs> original, all original music by Catherine and Denny. Exactly. <laughs> Actually, Bryce did write a little piece of music for this documentary. Right, so some little part that it needed, was like the fourth needed the right movie. mood. Oh no, we're going to, COVID is creeping into our lives. <laughs> it was good. Well, I hope anyone who's tuning in will be inspired by this by this documentary and by this awesome creativity that you've, you've come up with. But I, I, I'm always encouraging people to, to give a try at filmmaking too. This was brand new to, to both of you and you've created something so beautiful that just captures the time as it is. And that's also one of the goals we have here at WMCT TV is capturing life in Marlboro. And you have now contributed to this wealth of, of history uh, in, in this beautiful city. So so Ooh. thank you for documenting uh, your journey. And, and I hope many, many people will have an opportunity to watch it. We look forward to Thank that. Thank you so much. Well, that brings us to the end of another episode of Marlboro Minute. If you have an interesting story about something happening in this fabulous city, get in touch with us. We'd love to help tell your story. Take care.